Salute, MobTube. Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, I'm very excited about uh, the guests that I have on tonight. I think everybody is. I see we already got a lot of people here. Um, this should be very interesting. I was speaking with uh, Jimmy and Marie before the show, and they have a lot of interesting stuff to say, a lot of uh, information and life experiences, and I am going to turn it over to them and let them introduce themselves to everyone. Hi, everybody. I'm Marie Sorelli. I'm... Hi, I'm your brother Jimmy Sorelli. And uh, Jimmy and Marie, actually, as I said on my uh, little promo and in my earlier video, they uh, are the niece and nephew of Mikey Sorelli and Nettie Sorelli. Uh, Michael, well, actually, I'll just let you guys tell. Do you want to tell us about your uh, aunt and uncle and, and your yeah, father? Uh, they were, uh, he was our great uncle. And okay. He was my father's uncle, my grandfather's brother, uh, who my brother, my younger brother, Michael, was named after. And uh, they lived above the Raven Iron, 247 Mulberry. Uh, I guess since they were married, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, since 1926. Wow. Up to the time she, uh, you know, he he passed in. Uh, oh, I think it was in the early 80s. Yeah, and she passed away uh, in the in 2000 something. She lived to 91. I forget what uh, age he lived to. But uh, yeah, he was the caretaker on the on the on the Oneal Dole Crouch. He and, was a wise guy. Yeah, he was the main guy. As a favor to our grandfather, who we never met, uh, they they uh, they made him. Uh, oh, okay. Small guy in stature. Uh, always wore the same suit <laughs> every day. Really. You know, very old fashioned. Took care of that uh, the social club like it was his own home. Made sure it was well stocked with alcohol and deck of cards always available. Uh, that's that's interesting. Um, so when did he really take over that job as caretaker? Uh, was it because he lived upstairs, or how did, how did that work? Well, the Delacroach family are paisans with uh, the Sorellis, mm -hmm. and uh, O'Neill Delacroach is godfather to our aunt. So they, from what I from what I uh, was un, was told and understood, they used to eat together on Sundays. So when my grandfather passed in 1947. They made him, uh, you know, as out of respect for my grandfather, who wasn't a made man. And uh, they just put him in charge of, of taking care of the place. And under, uh, since O'Neill has been the uh, underboss since, what, the early 50s? The early 50s, 1953, I think it was. You know, uh, we're, we're friends with his daughter is still, is still uh, alive. She calls my son her, her nephew. And uh, that's how it all started. Okay. And what was your, uh, either of you can answer, um, or both of you, what were your experiences um, with him or at the Ravenite that you might have had in your lifetime? Well, I can remember being kids when we would go up to my grandmother's house on Kemmer Street on Sundays. We would stop by the club, Uncle Mikey's, and we'd always go in for an egg cream. We would dress to the nines. We all had to be perfectly dressed. Um, we would kiss his, his hand, say hello. He served us an egg cream. The two men would go off and talk. We'd be with my aunt Nettie and my mother. And sometimes my once in a while, grandma was there, but not often. Yeah. And, you know, it was just, it was like a, it was like a coffee shop, you know, the big, big machine hissing in the background, making all kinds of noise and, uh, a, a lot of glass rattling and a lot of talk and a lot of, you know, jovial fun going on and then we would go up to my grandmother's house and we'd have sunday dinner spend all day at the kitchen table eating and drink, drinking soda and talking about old times and then drive back to long island and then know. drive back to long island yeah um for anybody who didn't see or doesn't know what the thumbnail of this video is I, i'm sure you two saw i used uh two pictures one is of john Gotti in front of the ravenite and uh, the other one is the inside, actually, of your great aunt's apartment. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what kind of interesting characters did you uh, did you meet while you were in there, if any? Did you uh, or that you remember? Well, uh, I remember one time 
meeting, not meeting, seeing Gravano in there uh, when Gotti was was in charge. And I I think he was going behind the the bar to get a soda or something like that. He was he was a he was a presence, you know. He was a big burly man, you know. And uh, just a few of the of the ones that used to shoot craps with with our father. I mean, guy uh, Harry Cigars, he was called, and uh, <laughs> this guy Fungi, and all these other you know neighborhood guys that that, that went in there and all these you yeah. know they would all meet uh, and then go to the crap game after that and then you know do it all over again the next day. Yeah, I, I remember when I lived with my father when we lived at uh, on Lafayette Street. Um, he would go to work probably around 11 o'clock at night and he'd run the crap tables all night long and then he'd be home around me six, seven o'clock in the morning. And at the time I was smoking cigarettes and he would always leave a pack of Marlboro on the kitchen table that he would get from the club every single morning. There'd be a pack of Marlboro sitting on the table. So did you guys know the, um, or did you realize at the time, the significance of that place or the people in it? No, 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 because it was something we were used to seeing all the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I first moved around there with my, with my, my father in, in 82, I was just an innocent kid from Long Island. I, you know, nothing was told to me. I knew it as Uncle Mikey's place. I never I never knew it was called the Ravenite until after I moved out and I moved back in with my mom and I seen documentaries and A&E because he uh he never called, my father never called it the Raven Night. He goes, meet me and Uncle Mikey's Uncle later. Mikey's, yeah. We're going to meet and we're going to go have dinner, you know? And it was always outside the club, never inside, never inside. Never inside. Oh, really? We only, we only went inside on Sundays when it was with the family. We had to be dressed to the nines. We had to be very respectful. We were warned, you know, no running around, no acting mm-hmm. up, no, no bullshit. Just do what you're told, drink your drink, and we're going to go to grandma's. Well, well, uh, that stuff is uh, intriguing to me because I'm sure looking back on it now and knowing what you know now about those men, uh, that must be um, that must put a whole new spin on those memories, huh? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it all started uh, when I first got married and we went to Boston for a wedding and uh, we were going going to bed. We, we stood over and. The gentleman's house that we that we stood by, he he said, "Vinny, he's like uh, a German Shepherd." Yes, I'm, I don't mean to interrupt, but there's a lady talking about a German Shepherd. Yes, my uncle Mike he had a German Shepherd named King, who used to chase certain people off the neighborhood. Out of the building. Yeah, out of the building. Yeah, he would chase them down the block. But uh, getting back to that, I'm walking up the stairs, and he's like, "Because hey, I have the uh, the book Underboss." And everybody just, there was me, my wife, her sister, and her, her sister's husband behind us. Everybody on the stairs stopped. I already knew about the book, so did my wife. And he's like, well, he goes, didn't you live uh, off Prince Street, you know, when you were with your dad? I'm like, yeah. He says, they, they, they talk about a Mikey Sorelli. I says, well, that's not me. He goes, well, you don't have a common Italian last name. I said, well, there was another family called Sorelli down there. Because my sister's uh, sister, my, my wife's sister and husband are... You know, they're not the traditional street type. You know, yeah. they're like, uh, you know, nerdy type people. <laughs> you know, so they they didn't understand it. They uh, they would never understand it. So I just played it off. And then it was in the Daily News. It was in the New York Post. It was on Channel Two, Channel Four, Five, uh, Seven, and our grandmother was dragged into it. They had originally said it was Lena Sorelli's apartment. Yeah. Yeah, that got our aunt and uncle all upset, thinking, no, now she's involved. And when it was Aunt Nettie, who was Uncle Mikey's wife, and it turned wow. into a big, big mess. Yeah, I can only imagine after um, after all that, you know, the, the main bust in uh, 89 took place. Um, it had to be um, a nightmare for your, your great aunt, I'm assuming. Yes, the wow. name spread all over. They had to do a re- I think the New York Times had to do a retraction. A, a retraction. No, no, Daily News. Daily News, yeah, they had to do a retraction because they were naming the wrong people. I mean, it got it got bad. I mean, they were using names. They were just running around with notepads, just dropping, dropping names that they didn't even know were, were right or wrong. Uh, how do you guys feel uh, with that? How do you guys feel about now the fact that, you know, you can you could go on YouTube or, or turn on TV and see, you know, 
uh, any of a million documentaries where now they talk about your your aunt and they talk about her apartment and uh, everything that went on. Is that um is that surreal for you guys or? Yeah, yeah, very surreal. I yes. mean, we just you know we want to get it straight and just you know say how it happened, why it happened. I mean, when my grandmother died in the limousine to the to the cemetery, she told my wife and I, Nettie, how the club got its name and this and that, and how they bugged her apartment. They said that there was a gas leak and they were posing as con ed workers. It was FBI. They knocked on her door and said, look, we're going to need a week to get, you know, find out where the gas leak's coming from. You know, we can send you everywhere you want. And it was around, I think, Thanksgiving. Yeah. So her and her nephew went to Vegas for a week and they went up there and they planted all the devices and they just waited. And then when it was all out, they... I don't know how many months later they knocked on the door and said, you know, this is, I'm sorry, this is who we were back then. And we, confiscating your apartment and the entire building. Well, they, and, they had to tell about the, uh, the listening devices. Yes. And when she was telling my wife and I the story, and I'm like, she was, that's how it happened. Yeah. Wow. That's, um, God used yeah, to that's, pay her. God he used to pay her. I think they would have her leave. A hundred bucks. Uh, they would have her leave for two hours. Two hours go shopping, whatever. And they give a hundred bucks and, and they used to see the same woman the same time every day leaving because they were across the street watching. And they put two and two together. They went inside the building and seen the name. And then they did it. He was already dead by then, uh, Uncle, Mikey. Uncle Mikey. And he says, wait a minute. This guy was uh, had something to do with the, uh, with the family, this and that. That's probably where they're going. And that's how they found out. Well, they had originally started talking in the hallway. And then it went from the hallway to the apartment, yeah. Because I guess Gotti and, and Gravano knew that there was mics. There was the mics hallway. in the hallway. And in the back. So office. then they started using Aunt Nettie's apartment, and they would send her out. And like my brother says, she would go out at the same time every day, come back the same time every day. So the FBI put two and two together and said, Ah, you know, we we have to get into this apartment. And, and Aunt Nettie never went anywhere. She didn't visit nobody. Yeah. She didn't give a shit who you are. If you were dying. She was going to send a card, and that was as far as it was going to go with her. Yeah. But they lied to her and told her there was a gas leak in the apartment, and she got scared and decided, hey, let's go to Vegas. <laughs> and went to Vegas for a week, and they bugged her apartment. That's This is really good information to hear because uh, – I'm sure you guys read, you know, the media narrative of it, mm -hmm. and uh, that it was totally different than that. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, yeah. They into the apartment. They said that your aunt went to Florida. Uh, no. different. She wouldn't go. No. 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 She was, she was, a, she liked gambling this and that from what, you know, the little time we spent with her. But uh, I, I laugh when I see some of those a &E documentaries this and that, and they say, oh, you know, little Mrs. Sorelli on whatever the. On Mulberry Street, Mulberry Street apartment, and third I, floor. Third floor. And I, I shake my hand. My wife looks at me. I said, we know the truth. She says, well, are you going to say anything? I says, one day, yeah. But because, you know, she wouldn't it's, go far, visit nobody. It's, it's far from the truth. She wouldn't go visit nobody. She didn't give a shit who you are. She wasn't going nowhere. She went to the grocery store, and that was it. If she was even that lucky to do that. Yeah. Well, this is all uh, good stuff to find out. Uh People have asked me a question, uh, well, asked me this question several times today uh, before we started the show. Was Nettie the one in, the, there's a documentary where there's a lady outside with a German uh, shepherd in the yeah, street. That was Mikey's dog. Yeah, but that wasn't her. That was uh, this woman, oh, she was related on my grandmother's side. Her name was Gina. Oh, okay. That she would always walk, she would walk the dog in front. Matter of fact, when... They have the news clipping of Gotti coming out, pumping his fist, and there's a woman kissing him. Yeah. That's the woman. Dark hair. She's got dark black hair, hair. Dark black hair. Oh, okay. They're, they're, they're like a third or fourth cousin of ours. I'm on our grandmother's side. My, yeah. My father's mother's side. So, oh, okay. All right. Well, I want to get back to this stuff, but I don't want to – there's something I don't want to skip over. I just wanted to ask you if you could tell us a little bit um, about your father because I'm sure he has a story too. If you don't yeah, mind talking uh, about it. When he, when he moved back to the neighborhood, uh, he didn't. He was a truck driver, but he didn't go back to work. Uh, and he just started, uh, yeah. you know, doing what he did when he was, you know, growing up around there. He started uh, running the crap game. First, he was running it for O'Neill, double coach. And then when he passed in 84, 
And when Gotti came on full time, uh, he uh, delegated him to whatever the, whatever there was a, a a storefront or a place where they can have the game. That's where he would go. Whether it be on Hester Street, Grand Street, in the Bronx, Brooklyn, wherever, and he would go. He would set up, and the guys would come, and uh, he would run the game. And you know, give whatever he had to give uh, later on. Okay, and what was his position exactly? Was he just an associate? Yeah, just an associate. Just an associate. Yeah, he was low level. He kept. He. he I don't ever remember my father getting in trouble with the law. No, nah, nothing like that. Nothing like that. Even my uncle Mikey. There's you. You. You won't find anything. Well, let me take that back. If you do, there's some FBI files online that you can you can look up. And it'll have Mikey Sorelli's name, but they spell it differently. They spell it with a U, C I R E L L I U. And I think he did that deliberately to throw his name off. Yeah. But they only have him as an associate. He wasn't really anybody. He wasn't gang banging or doing anything like that. So he never got caught up in any any of the major cases or anything. Not no. that I'm aware no. of. No. If he did, he kept it really quiet. Yeah, he never said anything to us. It was, you know, he would. I, I, my sister said he would go out at 11 o'clock at night and he'd come home two, three o'clock, four in the morning. You know, he'd pay off a couple months rent, buy me uh short ass jeans, Pumas, that type of stuff back then. Members only jackets. Now I do remember, fine. I do remember on occasion we would go to restaurants and we would eat $200 meals. And my father would say, go wait outside. So we'd all go wait outside, and we'd be standing uh, there on the corner, like he was big on the he was big on, on the on credit the, cards, on the, credit cards the, the phony credit cards. Oh. And, we, my, and my mother would be sitting there chewing her nails, you know. We'd no, be this like, was after, this was after. Well, he did it with mommy too, but oh, he, we would sit there and we'd yeah, be like, "Oh shit, we're gonna make it home today." <laughs> this was back in the day when they had the books that they would run the card through the book. Yeah, they had like like a pamphlet that they would, and if the card was good. You know, and back then in the seventies, the cards were all good up until a month or two after they were cut. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, I when remember you, when that. When you're at a restaurant and the waiter comes over, the, you don't you don't look like an A Smith. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. <laughs> and I, I'm I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh my god, I'm like, you know, he went down. Uh, hold on, I'm not sure what happened here. Um, this would be a, this would be a terrible time for this. Yeah. Uh, give me a second, guys. Uh, but, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Until I I come back on, um, one of the questions that was asked is about um, was there any litigation or anything like that as far as uh you know the way they they got into your aunt's house and bugged it? If you guys could talk about that for a little bit, if there was any um, if there was any fight in the courts or anything over that. We never caught any uh, backlash, uh, you know, on on my father's side. They didn't like say that it was, you know, my aunt, uncle's fault, anything like that. It just, again, it made the papers, and you know, all the all the local news stations around here, and then it started going word word from out. Because if we would have had a normal Italian name like Russo or uh, I don't know Giordano, something like that. Nobody would ever say anything, but because it's Sorelli, Sorelli, it's not common. So when, what's your name? Or, you know, Jimmy Sorelli. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, yeah, I read you about know. you. And, or, aren't you related to John Gotti? You uh, know, and sometimes it turns out, yeah, he's our uncle. Was it your apartment that, uh, yeah, you know, I lived there. I used to take showers there. You know I mean? You know, it's, so it was hard to get away from that once the name was so publicized and everything. Yeah. What's our favorite restaurant? What's our favorite restaurant? Next what they, Deni- our favorite restaurant on Melbury Street is Danico's, by far. Danico's I never ate at, but uh, we went a couple of months ago and we ate at uh, Grotta Azora. Yeah, Azora. Yeah, that used to be in the basement. They used to have a basement yeah. where all the yeah. big, well, the movie stars used to go. Yeah, Frank Sinatra, that was his favorite. Yeah, uh, Robert De Niro, all the big wigs. Yeah, Danico's yeah. is my father's. Girlfriend's uh, nephew. It's of, oh, the name means of Nikki. So uh, his mother passed away. So he he's still there. He's out. He's a great guy. We ate there. Uh, we were there last Tuesday, but we ate at his restaurant about a month ago. Yeah, very 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 good very good Italian food. 
Um, okay, and I want to ask about before I forget. Uh, how did the um, the Ravenite? How did it wind up switching hands? We know it wound up uh, when Gotti took over, I believe, uh, after he became boss. Um, the caretaker then became Norman Dupont, I believe, right? right? Exactly. Yep. So how did that transition go? Was it strictly because it went from Delacroix to Gotti, or how did that work? Well, he was uh, Norman was my aunt Nettie's nephew on her side. Okay. So, and he was always there. So they just, they switched it over to him. And uh, I know he was a chauffeur to one of them. I don't know which one, but I used to see him all the time. He was, you know, nice guy, always saying hi. I never knew he was my father's aunt's nephew until a long, long time after that. I always knew him as Norman. I didn't even know what his last name was until like two, three years after the case was over and people uh, were writing stories about it and stuff. Yeah. But as far as litigation with Aunt Nettie, nobody really blamed her or uh, litigated with her or, or accused her of anything. You know, they just, they knew she was just an old lady and that they were using the apartment and whatever was being said in there had nothing to do with her. You know, she just happened to get caught up in it more or less. Yeah, what uh, what I what I meant more more so was um, was did she uh, fight at all? Did she fight in the courts or anything or or uh, in any way because of them getting into the apartment, bugging it without her knowledge? Not that we know of. Not yeah, that not that I'm aware of. Not yeah, that was said to us. She was mm -hmm. old. I mean, by the time all this was said and done, she was in her up in her eighties by that point. Yeah. So, and then Gotti went to prison. What ninety two? Ninety two. Yeah. So by then, she was pretty up in years. I know he sent word from prison when he went away that he wanted it kept open because they, the FBI, uh, they tried to shut it. And that's when my father was given the key and he kept it open for a little bit. But it was, that time, it was, it was all holes in the walls from all the bugs that were there. And <laughs> it was just a hangout for like regular neighborhood kids, that type of stuff. And. And it just, it just, it just, you know, they shut the doors. Yeah, yeah. And her husband was, yeah. There was one, one question there that her husband, my our uncle Mikey, Aunt Nettie's husband, was a, a wise guy. Yeah. Yeah, and what could Nettie have done, really, uh, as far as fighting it? Because, like you said, she was an older lady, but the FBI, you know, they dot their eyes and cross their t's. I mean, they probably had that. So, uh, you know, they they had that warrant. Um, you know, there, there was they convinced. You know, they had her convinced it was a gas leak in the apartment. She didn't know any better. I mean, you got to remember the, you know, the uh, time it was. You know, she's a uh, an old Italian woman from the neighborhood. You know, women. I don't know if anybody can associate with me out there as an Italian woman. You keep your mouth shut. You serve the food. You wash the dishes. You let the men play cards, and you do what you got to do. You don't ask questions. Yeah. Just do what you got to do, and. She never asked questions. Her husband said, do this, let them in, let them out, whatever the case may be. She did it. No questions asked. She didn't care what they were doing. She was getting paid a hundred bucks. She was probably going to buy shoes and purses and she was happy. This is all so cool to find out because like I said earlier, I mean, all these years, me and I'm sure most people have been reading that, you know, she just went to Florida for Thanksgiving and they, that they, they somehow broke in the middle of the night and installed the bugs without anybody knowing. I never had any idea that she actually was kind of tricked into letting them in. Yeah, and I also heard the same story from my father's brother. Uh, I, I picked him up one time and bring him over for my son's uh, parties. And he told me the story while we were driving in from Brooklyn. And I'm like, yeah, I said, she said the same thing. He said, yeah, he goes, don't mind any of these other uh, books or documentaries. They, they sent it to Vegas. They went in there, did what they had to do. And then months later, they knocked on the door, said who they were, and they were sorry, but that's they had to do what they had to do. I mean, we're talking about the FBI to begin with. They're not exactly stand-up guys. They're not going to turn around and say, yeah, well, you know, we lied to her and told her, you know, that we were going to send her to Florida to visit her nephew. Yeah. You know, they broke in her apartment and they lied to her and told her. Well, they didn't break in. Well, they didn't break in, but they they went into her apartment and told her she had a gas leak. They're not going to say, oh, yeah, we lied to her and told her she had a gas leak. They're going to make it. They're going to make it look like, oh, she decided to go to Florida on her own. No, not on a, not not on your life. And, you know, that's Con Ed. 
Yeah, that's totally believable because that's like what they did with uh, Paul Castellano's house. Yeah. They basically had a guy posing as a, a cable, you know, repairman uh, come in. And while he was supposedly fixing the cable, which which he actually screwed up to begin with so that they would call the cable company, um, you know, he while he was supposedly fixing the cable, he was actually installing a bug. So, yeah, this is the tactics of of the FBI. It's, it's really unbelievable if you think about it, the, the deception that's used. And then you look at the reporters and the people that write these books. I mean, not to change the subject, but you look at John Lee. I mean, these people that these stories that he's telling that they're writing movies and books about, they're not even doing their research to see if any of this shit's true. They're just writing books and saying, oh, well, he's saying this and he's saying that. It's got to be true. They don't even investigate. They just write it. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, I was having a talk with uh, uh, Jeff Nadu. I don't know if you saw when he was on my show. He's been on several times, but... We were talking about that, how uh, George Anastasia even uh, basically sold out and wrote this book filled filled with lies. And I think he um, sacrificed a lot of his credibility to do it, because if we do want to get on the elite, the John A. Light subject, I mean, I don't know. I know you guys want to clear some things up about him. So, uh, you know, I have no problem with that. So I will just let you uh, say what you have to say. Well, one thing I definitely know is. One, they did not let neighborhood kids in the club. Only when, when Christmas came around, and, you know, if you want to go in there and have a sandwich with somebody, Merry Christmas, that, or when the San Gennaro's feast was. That was it. Now, when I seen that video of him coming out, he had a jacket on. He wasn't dressed. He was probably in there five to ten minutes, probably uh, getting somebody to take them home. My guess is it was John Gotti Jr. It's not, I, I don't. I don't want to, you know, assume, but there was no way. They had old rules, this and that. They would not let not nobody that was not made in that club, even before Gotti, after Gotti, this and that. It would never have happened. That one time, yeah, because it's it's on video. But all these things that he's saying, um, there's no truth behind. Nobody knew him. No, no man. None of the guys in the neighborhood that I that I know. This, I mean, I had two friends of mine lived. In the same building above, they didn't know him. They never seen him. So, I mean, he's, you know, look, you want to make money selling bats and whatever he did in Queens is none of my business. But, I mean, I, enough already. Enough. I mean, now he's got, he's got, he's got the truth behind the, behind the pudding over here. We've been around that neighborhood. My father saw it for over 100 years. That, again, we used to call the club Uncle Mikey's. We never knew it was the Raven Night, but then. When I start seeing these things, I, I mean, I mean, really, you made your money, you know, go off into the sunset and 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 ride off, you know, ride off into the valley. You know, it's just, I, I don't know what he's trying to prove. Yeah, and, and that 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 one. Um, I'm sorry if you were about to speak. Um, no, 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 no. Right. The the one video of the Ravenite of him at the Ravenite is you know, already explained. Um, he was simply, you know, uh, John Jr. was financing A-Light Sportsbook. A-Light lived in Jersey, and he had to drop some money off to Jr. So Jr. said, instead of coming the whole way to Queens, just meet me uh, in Manhattan. And that's simply uh, the only reason he was there. And it's probably the only occasion he was there. I mean, and I think it was last week, I heard this audio tape of, uh, of an interview with Sammy Govano when he came off from jail, I think in 2017. I couldn't even hear it. It was some gentleman from London. And I'm like, wait, why is this John A. like putting this on his podcast? I, I, I didn't understand one word. I don't even know if he said his name or if he, I mean, I, I'm sure he knows him, but, but what are you doing? I mean, if you're going to have something to substantiate, have it legit and, and and put it there in black and white. Yeah. I'm like, I'm listening to this. I'm like, I, I can't, I says, look, something needs to be said. And that's when I spoke to my sister. And I says, you know, we, it's about time. It's, yeah. it's about time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's not familiar to me. He's only a year older than me. He's not familiar to me. He would have been in the neighborhood supposedly between 77 and 80 when I was there. And I couldn't tell you if he was in a lineup, I couldn't pick him out. I don't know who he is. He wasn't hanging around with any of the neighborhood kids I was hanging out with. And again, he's only a year older than me. He couldn't have been driving a car unless he was some kind of gangster driving a car. Really. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. 
So, so you don't believe his story that he was uh, to report to the Bergen uh, no. every day? And, and <laughs> no. When, when he said, I'm sorry, good guy. Well, he's, he, at the or at the Bergen, he had to report every day, and and then he said he was around senior day and night. He was a man. man. <laughs> no, no. When when he turned around and said he was on call twenty four seven on Fear City, and that they used to call him Johnny Vets back in the he was what two three years older than me. He didn't have his driver's license back then, and. Where does he get the name Johnny Vets from? Where, he, where did that name come from? Wasn't it? What was he driving a Corvette? Where, where did he get the name I'm from? Peter City. That's what he says. He was driving a Corvette. That's what it said on it's on a Netflix uh, show. And then he's he. He's, matter of fact, when you when you you haven't seen him, when you see it, he comes he comes on first, doesn't he, Chris? When you go on to the uh, to the video, he's on full Netflix. of shit. He's full of shit. He's full of shit. He's trying to sell a product, and people are buying it. I think he froze it out. He's still there? He's in the comments here. I don't know if he's still with us. We need to find us. No, we live in the neighborhood more. Take issues, he's coming right back. Okay. The sky is at work. Can't see Fed, yeah. Do you remember Lee Cole? Oh, no, I don't remember Lee Cole no, either. Pretty much in one. Tell us another person maybe that's good. Hold on. You see me, guys? There you are. Hi, guys. Uh, of all the nights to be having tef technical difficulties, it's got to be on the night where I'm having my uh, most important interview to date. Totally I apologize. I'm sure. Yeah, please. I don't know if people lost us or just me. I think um, we lost just you. Okay, so as long as every did everybody hear um, what they were saying while I was gone? <laughs> no, BK Cell broke. I swear I didn't go to the bathroom. Um, you know, <laughs> as luck would have it, uh, on a night like tonight, for an interview I was so excited for, something keeps going wrong. I don't know what it is. Okay. Um, so... Anyway, like I said, I apologize, guys. So, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know where you guys left off, but as far as the A-Light thing, I mean, like you said a minute ago about uh, how he put that tape out from his Patreon or whatever with, with who he claims to be Sammy, um, you can always spot a liar when he does nothing but spend every waking moment trying to prove that he's not a liar. Because uh, nobody who's telling the truth has to do that. Yeah, exactly. I, she hasn't seen Fear City. I have, and when I and he he's the first person that you see besides Michael Frances, and he's talking about that back in the seventies. Uh, he was this, he was that. He, he was know, born in sixty two in nineteen seventy. He would have been eight years old. Called him, <laughs> called him Johnny Johnny Vets. I'm like, and where's he getting this from? And you know, he was always a loan shark. He was, uh, he was a loan shark. He was this, he was that. And I'm what like, was he loaning Mon monopoly money to people? What was he doing? <laughs> well, a light, uh, let me just thank this person for the super chat. Paul Mastretta, five bucks. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, he, a light is the type of guy. He thinks he's the smartest guy in the room always. So he thinks he could actually lie to you even about his own age and that you won't catch it because he's just so he's just that good. You know what I mean? That's how he uh, feels. Anybody with a computer and a mouse can determine how old he is. That's all you got to do is punch his name into Google, and you can. September thirtieth, nineteen sixty-two is his actual birth date. Oh, is it really? September thirtieth, nineteen sixty-two. I did not know that. Nine years old. There's just there's no way possible. 
But what, what, what I don't understand is how does Netflix and all these other did you know Johnny Cha Cha Chikari? Yeah. All these other, you know, producers and directors are taking him for his word, giving him airtime, and he's probably getting paid good money. Guaranteed. That's it. I don't understand. I heard now he's in Hawaii or whatever. Maybe he's uh, maybe the Don F- Hall or something. Maybe the know. FBI sent him there. They're bugging his house. <laughs> maybe I mean the anniversary of Elvis's death. He could be doing uh, I late I late uh, comes to Hawaii. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> maybe he's uh, you know, maybe they got an active case out there. Maybe he's going yeah, under. They never know. They're, they're going to try him for a crime he committed when he was three. Unless he's going to throw himself into a volcano. I don't know. I mean, yeah, and, and you know what? Uh, that's if he's even in Hawaii. Because let's be honest, guys, I I don't even trust him that his name is uh, John A. Light. I don't even believe him. You know, I can't take his word. I wouldn't believe him if he said the sky was blue. Um, so, you know, um, nothing he says anymore at this point surprises yeah. me. So, um, is there anything else? And then I'll get to some other questions or we can take some comments. You guys, I know you both wanted to set some stuff straight. You already have. Is there anything else that you guys, uh, I know you've been uh, wanting to get on a podcast to clear some things up. Is there anything else you guys um, off the top of your head would like to talk about? Uh, you know, we're, we're just glad that we're given the opportunity to, yeah. you know, tell our, tell our story. I mean, you know, we have nothing to lie about. It's, it's, you know, uh, we were kids. We were kids. You know, going there when on a Sunday, driving in there from Long Island. My father taking us over to Uncle Mikey's, this and that. And then we would go home. And then when she moved in, you know, she she was there a few times, and the same with me. But it was. But it wasn't anything extraordinary. Yeah. It was this was normal. I mean, I'm I probably seen John Gotti a hundred million times, but he wasn't John Gotti. He wasn't the wise guy he was just a guy at uncle mikey's social club where my father would hang out you know that's this was, these were his friends you know you'd walk to ferrara's bakery and you see him you know sipping on a on an espresso ah eh, so what he's eating an italian ice <laughs> it, it was just, yeah, just it the was way just, it was it was you know everyday living it was you know then I'm gonna- you know if we were caught in the neighborhood when we shouldn't have been there they were rats i'm sure sammy and a few of the other guys would say Junior, I seen your son or your daughter on 14th Street when they shouldn't have been there. Yeah. We would get in trouble because there were eyes all over the place. You can't walk in that neighborhood without nobody seeing what you're doing. But other than that, you know, that's the way we we looked at it. It was like, who the hell are these people ratting on us? Yeah. And, yeah, well. You know, again, he's, he's making a living and, you know. Like I said, he's a, he's a liar. Yeah. He's his last name should be a liar, not elite. <laughs> he's, it's, it's terrible because he's he's accusing people of things that they didn't do. I just read a comment where someone said that John Gotti Jr. was acquitted because elite was lying, and they found out that his testimony was false. I mean, you know, come on, come on. Yeah, oh, you're fake. You're not Sicilian. Who? Oh. I don't know. I, I, if you scroll down, who says? Elite that? says you're fake. You're not Sicilian. You're not. You're not even. You're not even bald. We're not Sicilian. We're not bald. I mean, is he talking about us? No. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's talking about me. Where does it say that? Uh, let me see if I can find that, guys. Okay, on the um, West Coast connection, it says it. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me get to this one first. Sea Riders, four ninety nine. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, hey, F- uh huh. Oh, I'm you sorry. Might, you might need it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, FBS just updated Mafia lore about the Ravenite with this interview. Yes. Mob documentaries need updating now. Yeah, absolutely, guys. You um, That was really interesting information to get. And uh, JC and McCallie, 499, thank you. A-Light says you're fake, you're not Sicilian, you're not fat, you're not even bald. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he was right about two of those. But unfortunately, um, yeah, I'm all of those things. Uh, let me get to one more here real quick. Um, let's see. Uh, New York City Crime Spot 999. Thank you. Did anyone at the Ravenite ever rub you the wrong way? This is for you guys. Do you recall the violence going on a few blocks away in Chinatown at the time? With what, the Chinese? Uh, the Chinese? 
Yeah, I'm assuming that's what he means. Yeah. Never. We, ne we never had a problem with the, with the Chinatown gang. They or, stay on the other side of Canal yeah, Street, and, and we stayed on our side. I, of I had Street. a lot of friends uh, that were in some of the Chinatown gangs. I went to school with them. I, so I went to school uh, down on Sixth Avenue, uh, my sophomore, junior, and senior year. They were they were great guys. What was Uncle Mikey's position in the Gambino family? He was a uh, he was he just was a soldier. He was a soldier. Robert Pepper. Uh, he wanted to know what Uncle Mikey's position in the Gambino family was, and he was a soldier. Yeah, and uh, Tony uh, NY wants to know if you have any good Neil Delacroix stories. I, I think we know this person. Uh, I, I, I never met him, uh, and I don't know if my sister did, but I, like I said, he was my uh, aunt's godfather, and I heard he was a really intelligent man, a really good man. This and that. Uh, from what I heard, that if you needed the money to pay your rent, he would do it one time, and I know uh, Gotti did that later on. So he was like a Robin Hood before uh, you know uh, John Gotti was doing it, and that was really it. Now I remember Paul Castellano. I remember seeing his because of his nose. He had a very distinct nose. Yeah, I remember seeing him in the neighborhood a lot. Oh, he really? Eat at uh, Umberto's. He would always eat at Umberto's. Oh wow! And, yeah, and, and Patricia's and Patricia's yes. on on Ken Mitch. Yes. Wow, that has to be something, the memories you guys have. I'll tell you what. Um, one other question he had asked, uh, I'm not sure if you got to. Did anyone at the Ravenite ever rub you the wrong way? No. I mean, you, when I was a kid, they would give me $5, $10. Yeah, and I, so I would go back to Long Island with like 35 bucks. The most well, I bet, you know, for kids six, seven years old. We, we thought we oh were rich. Oh, my God, I thought I was a millionaire. We used to love it. You know? We'd be like, yeah. And then our uncle would take us to the candy store and spend like a dollar fifty, and we thought what we were getting. <laughs> yeah, we used to walk away with all kinds of money. I mean, as, as six and seven year old kids, we probably had the biggest bank account in the area, you know, because that's what they—that's what they do. Those guys, they hand yeah. you money. Everything is money. I mean, back then, I remember when you walked in, it was a huge picture of Babe Ruth. Yes. Uh, they had a poster of the '77 Yankees when they won the World Series, and they crossed off who got traded and. Who wasn't on the team anymore? They had every single Italian boxer. Yes. They, they had Jake Lamada. They had uh, 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 Richie, uh, not Richie Gennaro, uh, Tony Gennaro, uh, Rocky Marciano, you know, yeah. you know, all, all over the place. Now, the Ravenites got a, a history too with Lucky Luciano, he used to hang out there, but it used to be called the Alto Club. It was named after a saint. Oh, really? Yes, it started out as uh, the Alto of uh, Palto Alsa, or something like that. And then uh, it was renamed, I think uh, Gambino renamed it to the Ravenites. Something to do oh. with the um, Edgar Allan Poe poem. That's how it got its name. But then there's some people that say that there was a baseball team, stickball team, stickball team in the neighborhood that they were called the Ravenites. No, they, called the Ravens. they were called the Ravens, and that's how they got the Ravenites' name. So it depends on who you ask. Wow, this is an Italian a coffee house. Yeah, this is this is all. Uh, you have no idea how exciting this is for me to be learning. I didn't know that about. Um, I didn't know about Luciano and all that being there. Yeah, I had no Luciano, idea when that that far. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Uh, John Stahlberg, five bucks. Thank you. Um, so, is there anything else? Because I'm sure. Um, I'm sure you guys have done all the reading and watching, and you you know all the stories about. The Ravenite, John Gotti, Neil Delacroix, all that stuff. Uh, obviously, you're, you're a great aunt and uncle. Is there anything else you could tell us, uh, I have to ask this, that's, you know, different than, than what we've always been taught through through our reading and stuff? The way you, you corrected uh, the story about how the FBI got into your great aunt's apartment. Is there anything else like that, that, that you saw them make a mistake or purposely lie about? Well, for instance, now with that movie that just came out with John Travolta in it, playing Gotti. Now, I know a couple of family members got on the phone with the producer and told him that they either better pay to use the last name Sorelli or they better take it out of their dialogue because the name wasn't, the, even, the close. Name wasn't even close. So oh, really? Calling, yeah. So they ended up changing the name. I guess the producer got scared that too many of us Sorellis were calling and saying, look, you know, you've been dragging the family name under the bus for too long now. Enough is enough. And nothing to do with John Gotti Jr. I think he did an excellent job. Yes. On some of the parts in the movie, but 
I, I left before it ended because when I seen some of the dialogue and some of the stories, I'm like, this is nowhere near the truth. Yeah. And when I got up and walked out, I, I said something. The two people looked at me like, "How did you know? Does he know something that we don't know?" And I, yeah. just, I just walked out of the movie theater. I just spent thirty-five bucks on a ticket and popcorn and soda and this and that, and I left. And I was telling her, and I'm like, "There's no, it's it's nowhere near. It's me. nowhere near the truth." I mean, she goes, "Well, what name did he use?" I says, "I don't." Cerulo. No, or... no, no, not even Marino, something like that. Yeah. Not even close. Well. Uh... Like, yeah, my opinion on that movie is um, I think that movie was terrible, personally. Uh, I was not a fan of that um, at all. Uh, what did you think about the 1996 Gotti movie? That was pretty That was pretty right on. What was, what, what was what's uh, the actual was with, name? Uh, Armand Asante. Armand Asante. Uh, There's a new one coming out now with uh, who's, who's the Greek yeah. uh, actor that he passed away? Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, he, was at the, he was at the trial. Uh, Oh, um, oh man. Anthony Let me Quinn? What was it? Was yeah. it Anthony, Anthony Quinn? Yes. Yes, Anthony, Anthony Quinn. Quinn. Yeah, he played, he played Neil Dokoch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was as close because uh, a few ex wise guys, you know, they commented on it that it's, it's pretty accurate. And I have to say it is. Yeah, and I think uh, one of the best mob movies ever made, honestly. I love that movie. I could watch that uh, every day and it wouldn't get old to me. Um, so, okay, do you guys want to take some comments? Um, yeah. It's up to you if you want to go through them and, and uh, maybe pick whichever I'll ones you want. Off, that's, that's fine. We'll, uh, no. Okay. We'll uh, let me see what I got here. Uh, guys, if you have any questions uh, for Jimmy and Marie, please um, send Frank them out. Well, we never saw Frank Sinatra, but I know he was down at the Grotta Zora. He probably snuck it in, snuck out. Yeah, I'm sure. And from what I understand, rumor has it that it was O'Neill Devil Coach that got him in uh, from here to eternity. Oh, really? That's what that's what uh, I was told. Now, what about Uncle Johnny? We have a, my father's brother was, was in, in the Bronx, was, was in, in the Bronx, Bronx tale. tale. Oh, he was. Yeah, yeah the, the the bottom where they're shooting craps and the gentleman with the cigar in his mouth. I was just watching that scene. Yeah, that's our uncle. That's He's, our uncle Johnny. He he passed away in two thousand five. He was deaf, and he was a great man. He was, he could have been the first uh, deaf baseball pitcher. The Senad back, and he was throwing to my father down on Mulberry Street. A scout was eating in the restaurants. Drove down, was trying to talk to him. my father. Was like, "He's deaf. He, he can't hear you." It was oh, he has a great arm. Gave him his card, and my father took him in. And my grandfather took him to Ebbets Field two days later. He didn't want to sign a minor league contract. He wanted to go right up to the majors. Yeah. True story. Uh, yeah, this is all uh, interesting stuff. Um, let me see what some people are asking. And then I want to, matter of fact, well, yeah, I'll go to some questions first. This guy wants to know, uh, Philip Anthony, where did Gotti buy his bread? In a bakery. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anthony probably got probably, it in uh, Queens. No, probably at, the, at the Patrici's, not Patrici's, uh, Parisi's. Parisi's, yeah. Parisi's was on, a big on, area. On Mott Street or Fontanelli's down on Mulberry. Yeah. Uh, these questions, I don't know if there's anything you can uh, you can add to stuff like this. Uh, apparently, this guy's asking about Roy DeMeo. Um, no inside knowledge of stuff like that, right? I've seen on documentaries. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh Rats get bats says talk about Johnny Cha Cha from Mulberry, Johnny I mean, Ciarca. Uh, I don't. Uh, no comment. Okay. I, I I knew him. I didn't know him, know him, but uh, a friend of my uh, my wife's family knew him, and he got screwed. I heard, but uh, not that many people were crazy about him. Yeah. So they were Mulberry Street. And I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Steve Cutler, did they ever run into Sammy at the Ravenite? I believe you said you did, right, Jimmy? Just one time. I didn't know he was uh, behind the ball. I think he was getting a Pepsi or something like that. And Yeah, we didn't really know who they no. were. I mean, yeah, he wasn't like 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 today, like Sammy the Bull Gravano. He wasn't known to us like that. You know, he wasn't like – he wasn't the, the, the celebrity that he is now, you know, because – they were doing yeah. things they shouldn't have been doing. You know, I know he mentions my uncle in his first podcast, the opening statement, I believe. Mm -hmm. This and that. I mean, I know my father knew him. 
Did we know Mario Cuomo? No. <laughs> I don't know. Did you know Mario Cuomo? I seen him down in, uh, one time in the San Gino's Feast before he was running for governor. Yeah. And people didn't have too many nice things to say about him. See, our father used to put us to work in the Feast at San Gino. We, we would sell Zeppelins and Sausage and Pepper heroes. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I he love Zeppelins. We do all the work. <laughs> oh, that's cool. We'd be covered yeah. in dough and we'd be like, can we go home now? No, it's not time to close yet. Uh, we met quite a few celebrities down there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what somebody else uh, asked right here, actually. But that's at the club, but you're saying at uh, San Gennaro? Yeah, at the face of San Gennaro. Well, usually yeah. the stands were always set up, at least the, the, the Zeppeli stand and the Social Peppers were always set up right within within 100 feet yeah. of the Social Club, of uh -huh. the Ravenites. Yeah. So, you know, we were being watched. Not yeah. that we would have done anything wrong, but... I mean, if, if anybody wants to watch a really good movie about the neighborhood Mean Streets back in 73. Love uh, it. De Niro grew up on Elizabeth Street. My father's family knew him. He, 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 he put our uncle, uh, my father's youngest brother, in that movie. One part, sitting in a, 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 door, a door, looking up at him throwing shots at the Empire State Building. Gentleman with the pea cap, that was my father's brother. The Senat, so... I don't remember Lee Cole. Somebody asked me, Bo oh, Hitter. I don't, I don't know who he is. I don't, don't, uh, we're not mentioning um, his name. Uh, is that it, or did you, did you meet anyone else famous? You said you met some celebrities. I met Joe Piscopo, uh, yeah. Dom DeLuise through Doe on my father's face one time. <laughs> the day yeah. before the feast started. Uh, Tony, Tony, Dan Tony Danza, uh, Boom Boom Mancini. I had his autograph. Uh, Sophia Loren was down there one time with her daughter, you know, oh. fireworks at the time, and uh, uh so, so many. So yeah, many. I used to go to San Gennaro when I was a kid. Uh, I loved the feasts, and um, we you know, it. we hated it, <laughs> we hated it, yeah, because you uh, had to work though, yeah, we had to work it, and then you know, the people that come to visit they would do things in the hallways, and yeah, when we would go down when we were living there, we'd have to walk over. People that was from Wall Street, cockeyed, drunk, falling asleep. Seven uh, in the morning, when you got to go take the subway, and you're stepping over people dressed in suits, and I'm like, yeah, come on. Using the hallways as bathrooms. Yes. Not and that many neighborhood people up there. No, a lot of them would leave the neighborhood when the feast came yeah. on. They didn't want to be bothered. Yeah, if I uh, if I ever worked making Zeppelis, uh, I'd probably have a massive heart attack within days, and I'd probably weigh six hundred pounds. Uh, Zeppelis are my favorite thing; I love them. Um, when we went to uh, when I took my wife to Bensonhurst recently, I had her try Zeppelis for the first time. Um, let's see here. Uh, Brendan Walsh, Jimmy and Marie, bless you folks. How much better was New York City neighborhoods when the Italians were running things as opposed to today? Great question, Brendan. You could have walked around a neighborhood three, four in the morning. Yeah, and we did. And, and nobody would bother you. We did. There was always there was always somebody in one of the clubs. I mean, there was so many social clubs on every block. And, you know, they were in there playing cards, drinking, whatever. And, you know, you don't have to worry about somebody trying to mob you, mug you, whatever. We always had that. We had this one woman I'll never forget. Uh, we used to call her Fat Roseanne, and she was on Mulberry Street. She would hang out the window, the fourth floor window, and watch everything that everybody did. You couldn't get away with nothing. Yeah. I don't care what you thought you were getting away with. She knew what you were doing before you knew you were doing it. <laughs> and that was it. She knew everything that was going on in the neighborhood. I think there's one like that in every uh, New York City neighborhood, isn't there? <laughs> mm -hmm. Now they're little Chinese women. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so much different. Um, let's see. Uh, this is about the movie Ace Astero for 1996. HBO Gotti was extremely accurate. They must have had an FBI agent or a wise guy as a consultant. Every detail was pretty much on point. Yeah, I'm assuming they had many. Yeah, I would imagine because they were. Yeah, there was. It was pretty right on. It was, it was pretty right on. Yeah. Um, it was the language, the way they spoke to each other, and how they dressed, how they, you know. Their hand signals, that was pretty accurate, their hand signals, because the way they used the motion with their hands, this and that, they got that pretty uh pretty hundred almost hundred percent. Yeah, that uh from what I know, um that movie was extremely accurate and uh I'm sure they had 
they had multiple, uh, you know, X wise guys and, you know, FBI and, and all kinds of other uh, people involved in the making of that movie. Um, it couldn't have been that accurate if they didn't. Um, JC and McCallie, according to Democrats, neighborhoods get better through diversity and yeah, no politics, yeah. please. <laughs> Uh, Bubblegum Gangster says people from Little Italy hate when the feast is going on. Yeah. Yes, they leave the neighborhood. They don't want to be bothered. They go on vacation. That's when they go to Florida. Or Jersey. Or Jersey. Jersey. They down go to the, Jersey, the shore. Down the Jersey shore. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure um, that's not that's no fun living there when something like that is happening. Uh, I would go on vacation too. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to find other questions for you guys. Why does that name sound familiar? That's uh, Crazy Joe Gow. That's when he got killed in uh, Umberto's back in. I was I was what eight years old. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that was a uh, that was way back. Um, I'm on this from the Bronx. Yeah, I'm on Desantis from the Bronx. Yeah, forget about it. <laughs> uh, what do you think of Sammy? You know, I watch his podcast. We I mean, respect him, you know? you know. I mean, he he talks. He you know, it's true stories that he that he talks. He doesn't uh, glorify himself. You know, he knows what he did, and you know, he's just telling stories. I mean, I, I can't make a comment either way. Yeah, I could say at least with Sammy, um, you know, the majority of what he's telling you is true. I'm sure he embellishes here and there and stuff, but I mean, we have court records, articles, books, uh, movies, documentaries, that all pretty much, um, you know, align. They pretty much, you know, so we know the stories that he's telling us are true because they've been told in so many different ways, you know, that we can confirm all that stuff. Um, it's not like the other guy, you know what I mean, where uh, you could research day and night and you wouldn't find, uh, you wouldn't find proof of anything he's claiming. Uh, K-Mac yeah. says, thanks for answering, guys. Um, well, no problem. We want to get we want to get the record straight, you know, and we could probably make a few more episodes. I mean, because there's so much more to talk about. And oh yeah, and we're in no hurry. I mean, any any other stuff you guys want to get out, um, uh, you you can just take over if you'd like. People really want to hear what you both have to say, and we can always do more shows. I love having you guys on. I think this has been fantastic so far. But yeah, anything you guys want to talk about, uh, feel free. Yeah, that Sammy put in jail. You know anybody? Per I don't know anybody personally that he put no, in jail. Nikki Caruso must have robbed him with some. Uh, some friend. I, can't get over this I think he's not talking about Nikki Caruso. Oh, I don't know. But no, we just wanted to get the record straight, you know, especially with our aunt Nettie and you know, and the fact that um, she didn't go to Florida willingly. That was a definite no-no. Uh, she just did what she was told. Yeah. She was an old woman. They told her they needed the apartment. She did what she was told, and she went and did it. And, and, and it didn't. It didn't have a happy ending because uh, no. my uncle found her. She was dead in she the apartment. Was dead two days. She was ninety-one years old. Yeah. She, she fell. She put her hand on the table and she fell. Couldn't get up and she passed away. She and passed vomited. away. And nobody knew nothing for two days. If if our uncle didn't go from Brooklyn to go visit her, nobody would have found her. For who knows how long? Yeah. So you that's the, that's the sad part of it. You know, people are going into her apartment every day to use her apartment, and the woman still died alone two days in the apartment before somebody found her. You know that that that's not on the news. Nobody said, "Oh, poor Aunt Nettie." You know, the woman who you know, nailed John Gotti, you know, died alone in her apartment. And she also, she worked for Macy's customer service. Yeah. For 40 on 30, years. On 34th and 34th street. Really? Service, yeah. yeah. Customer service. Right. Till she was what age? Um, I think my father said, uh, in her, like middle seventies. Yeah. Wow. Subway there. And yeah, you know. used to go up to 34th street every day, every Monday through Friday for customer service. Yep. What a woman, huh? That yeah. woman looked at uh, that apartment looked the same for forty oh, years. Oh, that apartment was immaculate, from what I understand. I was only up there once, but I thought I heard it was immaculate. Yep. Could eat up the floors. Yeah, I bet she kept yeah. it. Uh, she kept it up. Um, so, if you guys already said this and I missed it, I apologize with everything cutting out. Uh, but what was her immediate reaction once she found out? She wasn't. She wasn't happy because of uh, you know the way they they came and I guess made up a story to get in there. And from what I understand, uh, I think her apartment got robbed after that. 
and she was pretty upset because she went downstairs and she says, look, everything is, I think they took almost all her furniture or TV, everything. And she says, I need to know. I mean, you know, who came in my apartment and robbed me? Was it because of what happened? And nobody gave her an answer. She wasn't happy about that. She was telling this to my wife and I at my grandmother's funeral. I have something to clear up. Paul Duhamey, uh, Elite says he's had an affair with me. I'd have to say that's false. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, be my future brother. Is, yeah, well, I was yeah. thinking of getting married, but uh, I prefer Italian men <laughs> as opposed to Albanians. But uh, uh, I'm sure I would impress him a lot, though, with my stories. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, some of my commenters. I'll tell you what. Yeah, uh, hey, you know. Yeah, it is. Inquiring really, minds want to know. I'm sorry. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> um, I uh, I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, that's that's sad. What what happened with your aunt and all that stuff? Um, it's really a crazy story. She didn't feel any guilt over anything, did she? Not to, not to no, made aware of. no, no, because she didn't think she did anything wrong. She was she told didn't. to believe she didn't. I mean, she didn't put the bugs in the apartment and she believed there was a gas leak and, you know, she didn't want to get blown up in the middle of the night. So she did what she was told. I mean, uh, her husband, our, our great uncle, that was a prized possession. She adored, yeah. she adored him. Yeah, that was her love. She adored him. They never had any kids, but uh, yep. he was her number one. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's some story. I'll tell you what. Um, if there's any anybody in here, uh, my moderators, I'm not sure how many moderators I got in here tonight, but if anybody's acting up or, or just in here to start trouble or talk negative, do me a favor. Uh, don't hesitate to get rid of them. Gravy. It's definitely um, sauce. Is it sauce or gravy? Where I come from, it's sauce. Thank you. I have this argument constantly. I never heard them call it gravy before the Sopranos. There's not even a word in the Italian language for gravy. <laughs> I do. Thank you. I'm so glad you said that. He calls it gravy. When he says gravy, I think we're having roast beef for dinner. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I never, uh, I don't know. I never called it that. Uh, I was always raised on sauce. This one asks, is, are there any stories of John Gotti paying rent? Yeah, he did a few times. Yeah, he paid Aunt Nettie. Yeah, he gave her money. No, I mean paying somebody's rent. Oh, pay somebody's rent? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah, he paid a couple of money. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, rent, but. I mean, these guys, you know, nobody can deny that when it really comes down to it, I mean, gangsters are, you know, bad guys. They do some bad stuff. But the people in those, re uh, in those neighborhoods who are uh, – raised around these guys and who live around them and grow up around them know that they do some good things for people too. Yeah. 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 They're, they're heroes in the neighborhood. I mean, yeah. that's how, that's how the neighborhood got started. A lot of these guys back in the day in the thirties and the forties, you know, when the, when the prohibition was going on and the depression was on these men in those suits and the, 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 the prohibition and the illegal, gins that they were running that's how they paid these people they gave them money they put food on their table so now they're in a neighborhood where they're being protected you couldn't infiltrate that neighborhood why do you think the fbi had so many problems for years they couldn't infiltrate because the people in the neighborhood would say oh no 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 you're not coming in here these people protect us these are all bodies they protect us they pay our bills they put food on my table yeah. i don't care that they're on the next block shooting and killing people they feed my family. Yeah, of course, because people, are, it's in human nature to look out for number one. That's right. And there's oh, old movies that will show you that. The old movies from the 50s and the 60s and how they, and it's not just in Italy. They do it in Spain, in Portugal, in, in England. They do it all over. Wherever there's, there's neighborhoods and poverty, you have people that will take advantage and will infiltrate those neighborhoods with crime. But they'll take it. Look at what's his name? That the the Mexican cartel. El Chapo. Yeah, El Chapo. Well, he was a he was a, a hero. Yeah. You know they didn't want to turn him in. He was feeding. He was building schools. Yeah, and that's what matters sometimes. Um, yeah. Regina says uh, 
Fatball Sicilian, can you ask them how they feel about Michael Fran Zies? Uh, how do you feel about him? Uh, he's yeah, he's he's right on. He's sincere. I mean, uh, he doesn't like uh, you know go off into a far off world. I mean, most of his stories are I guess backed up by documents and and trials, uh, recordings and and manuscripts. So uh, yeah, I, I think he's pretty accurate. Yeah, that's what I always said. I said, you know, some people think he embellished his position a little. He may have, but uh, bottom line is, is he was there and he lived it. Yeah. There's no getting around it. Did I, uh, did I see him down there? I don't recall ever. I heard about his father. That was really about it. You ever you ever see his father or, or meet him? Just uh, uh, he was a, he was a legend. He was he was always spoken about, spoken about every once in a while. Somebody yeah. wants to know if Michael Franchisi ever gave them helicopter rides. <laughs> <laughs> you wish, right? Yeah, uh, I heard he had a wheat in there a couple times. You know? Oh, God. Uh, Tony and why? Uh, how did the Raven I deal with local crime? Any good stories? Ooh, yeah. Uh, there was a time uh, when this uh, other guy from another neighborhood came in and was doing a feast. And sucker punched uh, this this friend of ours right in front of his mother, knocked him out cold. And within 24 hours, he was found in the South Bronx wrapped in a rug, and it said "animal inside this rug." And that sticks with me to this day. It's like a year after I moved there. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh... He was a bad kid, from what I understand too. Well, they took care of that, didn't they? Wow. Yeah. So. Food center, food center in Mulberry Street. We used to shop at the T Bones. That was fucking else. Fontanelli's. I used to shop at the the T Bone. Uh, but it was just the, it was just a neighborhood, Chris. That you never, you know, if you knew it, you didn't fool around. You you went there to eat or you know see somebody, and that was it. You minded your business, and you know, yeah. Kept it quiet. Our father used to say to us all the time, the less people know about you, the better off you are. Don't tell nobody your problems. If somebody asks you how you're doing, everything is great. How are you doing? Is there anything yeah. I can do for you? Me, I'm fine. I'm going to go home and I'm going to eat. Are you going to go home and eat today? And that's the way it was. You don't tell nobody your problems. You could go home to a shithole and, and have nothing to eat, but you don't tell nobody your problems. The less they know about you, the better off you are. Yeah, I should actually start taking that advice. Uh, <laughs> uh, DLM Brock eleven twenty eight says, "Has any major networks approached you about being in documentaries, or ask your advice on any documentaries or certain mobsters?" No, just that one with the, the Travolta movie when a bunch of us Sorellis got together and started calling them and sending emails and telling them that they better not use the name without permission or paying one or the other and that's when they changed the name to marina or whatever the name yeah, was yeah and, and just after the uh the book underboss came out jerry capisci i don't know how he got my number on long island he thought it was my father i just get off the train and my mother's like this guy jerry capisci i'm like who's jerry and then he was asking me and i'm like do i sound like a 50 something year old man because i'm in my 20s and you got you got the wrong one as you're talking about my father and this and that and I, I don't know what he wanted, but he was he was looking for information about the apartment and anything else like that because he talks about it a lot also. Yeah, it's mentioned a lot. I mean, you you almost can't tell the story of you know basically uh, Gotti's downfall without mentioning the apartment. You really can't. Um, without those tapes, who knows what would have happened? Really, I mean, I think we all know eventually they would have got gotten Gotti, but yeah. um, that's what did it. Um, at the time, do you guys ever think about? Uh, have you ever thought about writing a book about yeah. Any of this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, we're gonna get together one of these days, and I'm gonna type while he dictates. That's for sure. <laughs> You're yeah, gonna you know, he's the guy. He's got more inside information than it could. You know, as as a as a, as a woman, you know, they just you, you got the first scoop. Chris. Yeah, you know, we don't know as much as you guys know. But yeah, you got the first scoop for sure. Uh, yeah, and I appreciate it. Trust me. Um, I love the information uh, that you guys gave to us. Uh, 
so far. This is really interesting yeah. stuff. And, and, you know, it's really amazing because, like I said, this is, you know, over 30 years now, people have been reading a different story altogether. Um, Not true. Yeah, it's fascinating. Even that little detail makes such a big difference, you know, in a story like that. Because let's face it, that story is a part of American history. Bottom yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, they're putting up a museum. The um, uh, the Italian American Society, I think it is, is the ones that are opening up the um, or doing the museum. It's part of history. They have to. They have to go with facts. Uh, that's probably why he's in Hawaii. I heard he's getting special cement when they make the, you know, the statue of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's getting the cement with the rebarb in it. Yeah. <laughs> and I heard he's going to have one of his bats in his hand. Yeah, you know? with, a, with a ball. Yeah, yeah, with a ball. With a ball, yeah. A bat and a ball. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's funny. Uh, Mike Fleming, is this their first interview on this uh, awesome information? Oh, yeah. Yes. You got the, you got the exclusive. Yeah, and I uh, I am so grateful for the We talked amongst ourselves, but uh, never to anybody else, really. Yeah, so you guys are hearing it here first, and uh, I am honored to have them on. This is really um, this is really good stuff. Uh, I, I you know I read so much about this stuff all, all these years, and to find out the real story is uh, is nothing short of fascinating to me. Well, it's uh, the FBI's funny. mo, yeah, it's their mo. You know, to, to go in and lie and say is a gas leak or your cable's down or your phone needs servicing, and that's when they go in and they bug everything. That's why to this day I don't trust if a man comes to my door and says I'm here to check your gas. I don't have any gas. <laughs> I, don't door. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, really, that'll make you think twice before you let anybody in, huh? If I didn't call you to come fix it, then don't knock on my door. Yeah, and the funny thing is, even if you watch them, um, it, it's not good enough because they're so slick. Like with the Paul Castellano story, I think it was Tommy Bellotti who stood there and watched this yeah. cable guy the whole time he was doing what he was doing and still didn't notice that he was installing a bug. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. They practice and they... they uh, you know, they'll get blueprints. They know exactly what they're doing before they ever go in there. Like I read that with your aunt's apartment, they already had the whole the whole floor plan. They had everything before they went in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I heard <laughs> Elite created the COVID vaccine. I heard that too. <laughs> because when, when, you, when you first watch one of those a &E documentaries and they're listening in, in the Ravenite, and they hear background you know, the jukebox playing, they, they knew that they were being recorded. So then they went to the back of the, of the apartment building and they bugged that back there and they still couldn't. Then all of a sudden they didn't hear him for like 45 minutes to an hour saying, where did he go? Yeah. You know, did he leave? Did he, did he go have a slice of pizza? The, you know, did he go home? And they're like, no, we still have him, you know, inside the club. And that's when they started seeing, you know, her every day going out shopping and they put two and two together. And you know, that's when they came I think, some, I think some informants also g gave information, right, about the apartment. Finally, well, what, what, what we understand, yeah. I mean, we have we have ideas, and but it, it could be there was so many neighborhood people that lived in that building across the street, down the block. We don't, you know, we 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 we've had uh, certain discussions about it, but yeah. Jimmy in line, Marie. Yes, I will keep Jimmy in line. I always keep him in line. He's my baby brother. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Regina asks, Fatball Sicilian, can you ask them how they feel about a Light being John Gotti Sr.'s hitman? Oh, good question. How did I... Uh, well, thank you, Regina. I'll let you answer that one. <laughs> I mean, here's a man who had probably the MVPs of hitmen around him. Yeah. I mean, why would he have somebody like him? He wants to train him. I mean, that's all you hear him. out of him. I killed this person. I killed that person. I, I'm like, but what, how come it, it never made the news? It wasn't. He wasn't on America's Most Wanted. He wasn't <laughs> on Unsolved Mysteries. And he, I, you know, I don't know. He maybe, wasn't even on Forensic Files, for goodness sake. I mean, maybe he was on Balls of the Clown Show back then. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know where he's getting these things from. 
Well, like I said, I mean, before the newspaper articles, did any of us ever, or I mean, before he became a rat and, you know, it was in the newspaper articles then, did any of us ever hear of this guy or see his name in an article or, or no. until, before he testified against Scotty Jr.? I mean, I never heard this guy's name and I studied the history, the history of the mafia since I was five years old. I never heard this guy's name. Never. Never. I don't even, he's not even recognizable. He's he, he points out to videos where he's supposedly standing with John Gotti Jr. And it doesn't even look like him. You can't tell that it's him. He points out to a, a shirt that he's wearing or I, I was wearing a certain jacket. Well, I could say that, too. That was me standing there with a jacket on. I was there, too. I mean, is he a, is he a, a, a tough guy? Isn't that probably? Yeah. I mean, yeah. do some bad things. Yeah. I mean, like again, what he what he did in Queens and his person that's his business. But you know, again, it was like I wanna say a second home to us, but we grew up from the age of six on either there or you know, meeting my father there or having people come out and talk. I mean, you know, it was like it's part of it's part of our history. Yeah. It's history. And it's like, you know, you wanna yeah. make a dollar, make a dollar, but tell the truth. Yeah, don't 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 lie about somebody's involvement in things that they weren't involved in, or or try to get somebody put in jail. Or that's, I mean, somebody asked earlier, you know, how do we feel about rats? I personally don't like rats. I think you should keep your mouth shut. You're better off saying you don't know something than saying you know something. Yeah. You you you, you just don't do it. I mean, I understand if it's your ass or their ass. I understand that, but. I, I don't I don't I don't think it's right. I don't think it's right. Um yeah, I agree. Uh did you know Joey Bellotti? That's uh and how tough was it? No, Joey Bellotti was very tough. I don't know. No, the name isn't familiar. You mean Tommy you mean Tommy Bellotti? Yeah, he said Joey Bellotti. I'm not yeah, sure about no, that. I just, I just knew what I seen on the documentary that he was uh Castellano's underboss. Yeah, as far as I know, he was a he was a tough bastard. Who um, is the owner of the Ravenite? The actual owner was O'Neill. Was O'Neill? Yeah. No, you don't, folks. Uh, I want to get to this question in a second, but while we were on the A light thing, uh, just one more question since we were talking about, um, you know, him being a hitman. Uh, what do you think about him saying he knew about the Castellano hit before it took place? What do we know before it took place? <laughs> well, you say that? All, all I know is when uh, when I went home on the 16th and I put on Channel 7 News. No, no, no. I'm saying uh, A-Light said that he oh, knew. That he knew about it before it happened. That he oh, knew yeah. It yeah. He was an inside man. Come on. <laughs> so he also knew when the Titanic was going down and when Pearl Harbor was about to happen. Of course he did, and he was in on it each time. Um, Lexi Johnson says, can you ask them what it looked like inside the Ravenite back then? I know you kind of did already, but I see pics where the walls were red and a nice bar and others where it was plain white, uh, regular tables, which is correct. Yeah, that was before it got renovated. He renovated it when he came uh, under, you know, under him, uh, Gotti Sr., and I think in 85 or 86, they gave him a hard time about getting permits – to uh to redo it because it was it was green it said members only on the outside it had the old floors which are still there and uh all the other stuff that he you know redid the whole inside and put bricks on the outside with a screen door yeah that white screen door yeah, yeah. it took a while for him to get that get get that done we got our, oh we got our first threat was, uh, oh yeah we know somebody said let's see uh hold on Oh, what a bunch of losers you got. They don't know blank. Johnny A Light will wipe the street with you. Okay. Oh yeah, we get we get a lot of these um these John A Light fanboys in here. Uh, I get them here, kitty, 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 kitty. They're the only ones in here uh who are they're only ones out there that aren't in on the joke uh that John A Light is. You know what I mean? Like everybody else has figured out A Light except for a select few. Um actually there's a good bit of them, judging by uh his following, but it's a shame that you know people can be convinced of anything. Um, that's fine. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, um, 
Angel Angel's talking about uh, John A. Light. She said, that's funny. No one knew his name was the sheriff back then. Yeah, did you hear that? <laughs> when he says, they called me the sheriff around here. Really? That's what he says. Yeah. Oh, how about this one? Thank you, uh, Facts Over Feelings. The Ghost of Frankie. Do you know what this is about? Did you see when John A. Light was showing that Ravenite tape on on an, on an interview and they asked him, or I'm sorry, it was after he showed the Ravenite tape. He was asked on another interview if you knew Frank DeChico and he said, yeah, he was in that Ravenite tape I showed you. Now, the Ravenite tape was in 1990. Yeah, he was Frankie, yeah. Frankie DeChico died in 1986. He was blown up. Yeah. So he claims that uh, I guess the ghost of Frank DeChico is in that video with him. Unbelievable. I mean, when you, when you look at his body uh, movements, the snack, his eyes are constantly going up. He's he doesn't look the person directly in the face, so it's like he's reading you know, you know off a script or as it comes into his head, he just says it. But he never gives names, places, or when. Yeah. You know, one one time he said fifteen people he killed, and it was thirty. Then it was 11, uh, then it was two. Yeah. Which is it? I mean. Yeah, I know. He can't keep his his own lies straight. That's the problem with lying is you got to, uh, it's too much to remember. Uh, Ray Ray the Road Dog, this is funny. He says, Mr. A Light does not always smile, but when he does, he shows 55 large worth of dental work paid by paid for by the feds. <laughs> that yeah, is I, thought, I noticed that. I noticed that. I seen his teeth really messed up back in the day, and all of a sudden he's got straight teeth. Uh, you know. Yeah. Appa know. Apparently he got. They paid fifty grand. He basically demanded to get his teeth fixed before he would go on the stand. And apparently our government paid fifty grand to get A Light's teeth fixed. Fifty thousand. What does he got? Gold plated teeth. I know, right? Who knows? Uh, I want some of that money back from the feds. That's yeah. I pay taxes. Well, yeah, me too. Uh, what I don't understand is that he said that he was worth $35 million and he had uh, clubs and everything in parking garages, and he gave it all up. What, what did he give it all up for? Yeah, it, I says, know. it says, I got a question for everyone. Do you think Elite believes his lies, or does he think he's outsmarting everyone? Oh, he's laughing all the way to the bank. I can say that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's unreal the money uh, he's making. Like people try to talk about him like he's he's broke, you know, because I believe he does live with his mom. But uh, yeah, there's no doubt that he's making a fortune with all this uh, nonsense. Facts over feelings, uh, five bucks. Thank you for the super sticker. Um, do you guys see any other ones? Um, I had to say it, Mike. You know I love you. Uh, didn't he just come out with a with a book? Bam, uh, five bucks. Thank you. Uh, what did any of what come out with a book? I read somewhere uh, that he, came, he just came out with like a July twenty fourth. He came out with another book. There's another book that just came out. Oh, I don't. Uh, I'm assuming it's Mafia International, only because that's what he's been promoting for the longest time now. A book called Mafia International. You know, because now he's an international mafioso too. Oh. He claims to have been in, uh, when he was on the run, he claims to have been in 20 different countries and, you know. So I guess he's uh, pretty much, he created Spectrum also? Yeah. A cable company? Or... <laughs> well, yeah, you know, he's got yeah. his hands in everything, you know? Yeah, of what course. The Ravenite today? Uh, the Ravenite today is just an empty storefront right now. Covered up in brown paper. Co yeah, they're going to be making it into a museum. An Italian American museum. And he's yeah, and I'm. Is it gonna he's he's going to be out front handing out baseball bats for free. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, he's not going to the money anymore. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> the baseball bats, Jesus. A Light just sees these trolls do not know one thing about the history of the mob and uh, use A Light as that. Yeah, I know, I know. A, a lot of his fans and supporters are overseas. They're from out of the country. Yeah. They don't know uh, mob history, really. So, uh, Bama, $5. Thank you again. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. What else is there, guys? I'll let you go in a few minutes here. 
Um, unless there's anything else you want to talk about or uh, no, but we'll definitely uh, be willing to do another interview. Yeah, um, I'll tell you what, we'll keep in touch, and um, anytime, anytime you guys want to come back uh, in, I'll or on. I'm sorry, I'll be glad to have you on. Well, it would be great to do, Chris, if we can get uh, Jimmy Calandria on also. I I'm dying to talk with him. I mean, I, I again, I spoke with him on Instagram a couple days ago. Yeah. Uh, there is a mutual friend that uh, we both know that he mentioned in one of his podcasts. I forget how many weeks ago. You know, yeah. if, you could, if you could do something like that, that'd, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll definitely talk to him about it. Uh, I'll see what he says, and I'll let you guys know. So, um... Uh, Clifford Young, Super Sticker, 1999. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, uh, I just want to thank you guys. This was fantastic. Thank you. No, thank you. We appreciate it. We wanted to get some things straight. Yeah, absolutely. And anytime, uh, anytime you want to come back on, like I said, we'll keep in touch. Um, and just let me know. And we can do this uh, whenever you want. I'm sure everybody enjoyed it. I could tell we got 330 people watching live. Uh, I think that's the most I ever had. We have, um, we have uh, you know, plenty of people commenting. So, uh, yeah, thank you again. This was fantastic. Right, thank you. And, again, uh, offline, I'll uh, send you my, uh, you know, my number. Yeah. And, yeah. and my, my, of course, uh, you'll get my email address and everything. And, and yeah, we, uh, we definitely want to go ahead with a book. I think it's time. Yeah. Uh, we're not looking to become millionaires. We just, we just want to – you hear it from the horse's mouth. I mean, we have nothing to lie about, nothing to make up. It's, it, it's, it's, it's right, it's right on. It's yeah, know. and it's upsetting, you know, that that facts aren't what they should be. People hear stories and think it's fact, and they find out that it's not, and you know, they don't understand that. You know, we we just want the truth to get out there, you know. And again, you know, when it goes back to our aunt Nettie, you know, the fact that this woman. You know, the way she left this earth is pretty sad, you know, after all she's been through in her life, you know, and that, you know, they got her going off to Florida for Thanksgiving, which was a total joke. She doesn't know anybody in Florida. <laughs> you know, it's funny, too, because I literally just read that maybe 20 minutes before we did this interview. And because I, I was going to ask you about it specifically. Yeah, no, no. I mean, other than Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, she didn't know. She'd rather go to Vegas. And shoot and, and play twenty one or craps. Yeah, that's when I said she was a gambler. She yeah, she was a gambler. She didn't. Yeah. So unless Mickey Mouse had a deck of cards, she wasn't going to see Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah, I would much rather go gamble too, to be honest. And to leave, oh. from what I understand, to leave that apartment for a week, she would have never done it unless it was worth a while. Yeah. From what we were talking. So there was no way she would ever leave that leave, leave that neighborhood for, for for a week. Never. Never. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you for having us on. We really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, thank you. Really good time tonight. Yes, uh, and this was uh, fantastic for me and uh, everybody watching. Thanks again. Um, like I said, keep in touch. And um, I think I'm going to stay on here for a, minute, a few minutes just to talk to everybody. But, um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, All I'll, right. send you, I'll send you that information via your email, and then we'll, we'll chat. And uh, I'll – Give you more personal info. All right. All Sounds right. good. Yep. Talk you to you soon. Good night, Chris. Take care. Take care. You too. Right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Yep. Bye. All right, guys. Um, what can I say? Excellent. Uh, Kokomo Slim, five bucks, super sticker. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, thank you, Sea Riders. Uh, I don't know how well I did, but I'll tell you what, uh, for me, uh, being somebody who's been hearing these stories since I was just a young kid, uh, fascinating stuff. Um, just learning about the truth about how they got uh, Nettie out of that apartment, um, just that alone um, was fascinating. But I loved the whole interview. I loved hearing their opinions on everything. Uh I'm so grateful for them coming on, and I hope everybody um, enjoyed that. That was terrific. So uh, thank you guys for all the super chats and everything. Sea Rider says, FBS knocked it out of the park. Thank you. I hope I did. Um, 
uh, Raymond uh, Derucci, FBS, great show. Uh, thank you. And hey, I'm gonna make um, I'm gonna make some more people uh, moderators too. So if if you guys start seeing your comments or your names with a wrench next to it, uh, you know, I'm gonna do that tonight. Just because you know, there starts to be so many people in here uh, talking shit uh, so often that uh, I don't know. If, if any amount uh, of moderators is enough. So some of you guys that I, I trust and I, I'm used to seeing in here, I'm going to uh, give you guys a wrench um, and you'll have it on the next show. Uh, so uh, let's see, Kokomo Slim, congratulations. That interview uh, was a walk-off Grand Slam home run in Game 7 of the World Series. Thank you, Kokomo. I appreciate that because I honestly was um, – I was obviously uh, – a little nervous about this because, um, you know, these are people who reached out to me. Um, as soon as I, I heard who they were, I instantly took interest. I wanted to hear their story so bad. Um, I offered for them to come on the show. They accepted. So, you know, for me, this was kind of a big deal. Uh, I just think it was amazing to, to really get that inside information because honestly, guys, uh, how often do we get new information about uh, any of that stuff that went on back then? Uh, it's not very often. I think Wikipedia might have to be updated after this interview. So, uh, yeah, I'm stoked, guys. I'm super uh, hype about this. This is great. Facts over feelings. All right, I appreciate that. Uh, I might take you up on that. Um, thank you, everybody. And listen... I want to come back on tonight, actually. I want to do kind of an after show, and uh, I want to have Jeff on with me and talk about some of the stuff that was gone over in this interview. Uh, we talked about it earlier. I'm not sure if he's still free. Uh, let me see. Okay. I'm not sure if he's um, still free, but if he is... Uh, I want to come back on. Now, I saw Mob Rats just exposed. I believe he just went on. Um, yeah, so I don't want to step on his toes. I want to give him a while. So um, I'm assuming 1030. Uh, let's just say I'll be back. Uh, I'll call Jeff, make sure his he's free, and um, I'll be back at 1030. If you guys want to join me just for kind of a little after show and uh, – Give your thoughts on, on this interview and, and whatever other mob stuff we decide to talk about. Because, you know, when me and Jeff get together, we just kind of bullshit and talk about everything mafia. So, uh, BK Salbrook, $10. Always here for you. Thank you, man. Uh, that really means a lot, BK Salbrook. I appreciate you as – or BK Sal Crook. I'm sorry. I appreciate you as always. Um, Yeah, I think Bob Rex just went on. I'm not sure, but I thought I got a notification. So thanks again, guys. And if you're still around, if you're still awake, please come back. Join us at 1030. We're going to do a whole other show. Um, I think there's a lot to talk about, and I think Jeff will have some input on all this too. So uh, hopefully you'll all show up, uh, and I'll see you guys then, like I said, 1030. All right? Salute.